my dear people of Imo State, I address you once again on the subject matter of COVID-19 pandemic. This is in keeping with my promise to regularly update you the situation report on our relentless effort at controlling the spread of the virus in the state. To this end, we have increased the number of daily tests carried out in the state. We now carry out an average of 150 tests daily. Courtesy of our new diagnostic center. We have also trained close to 7,000 health workers at the state, local government, and world level. These health soldiers are currently engaged in aggressive public enlightenment campaigns in all the nooks and crannies of the state to create awareness on the reality of the virus. I believe that one task before us is to make our people come to grips with the reality of coronavirus. You will recall that when I briefed you a few weeks ago, I announced the partial easing of the total lockdown, among other things. I announced that food markets and food vending stores were allowed to reopen. I also announced a partial lifting of ban on public gatherings, limited to not more than 50 persons, who must observe all the safety protocols. Such safety measures include maintaining social distancing and such gatherings, provision of wash hand buckets, and sanitizers and compulsory wearing of face masks. The idea of easing the lockdown was to ease economic hardship on our people. I thank the good people of Imo State for abiding with the guidelines attached to the easing of the lockdown. At least a good number of our people did. It is, however, very sad to know that many of our people do not observe any of the safety protocols. People move about without face masks. More than 50 people gather in public places, contrary to the letdown rules, and worse still, without face masks. The issue of reckless abandon is mainly due to the fact that many of our people do not believe that coronavirus is real. They say so openly to whoever cares to listen. This is truly unfortunate and dangerous because the truth is that not just that coronavirus is real, but that it is the name of state. While it is not my intention to frighten anyone, I am not less duty bound to let you know that we now have more confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state. The truth is that the state has witnessed a surge in positive COVID-19 cases. Needless to add, that the apparent rise in the virus is not far to fetch. The need to avoid the danger of sliding into an attitude of denial and complacency in the face of an unrelenting pandemic can never be overemphasized. Consequently, there is an urgent need we renew our effort at strictly enforcing all the preventive safety protocols against the virus. This is so because the main factor contributing to the increase in confirmed cases, apart from having our own test center, include all the ill-advised refusal of our people to observe simple safety measures. Incidentally, strict adherence to these safety measures was a necessary condition for the easing of the lockdown. But we now have more confirmed cases of the virus in the state. This is not good enough. If anything, it is indeed frightening. I hope it sends a clear message to the doubting Thomases that COVID-19 is real and is here with us. 
we must all be worried about this rising level of community transmission, which the outcome of these tests portend. It is important to reiterate that as a government, we have not left any stone unturned in our efforts to curtail the coronavirus disease. Every step needed has been taken to help curb the transmission of the virus in the state. What appears to be lacking is the most needed cooperation from our people to observe necessary safety measures. In the circumstances, I must make it clear that all safety measures must be adhered to. Henceforth, any person or group of persons caught in breach of any of the safety measures will be promptly arrested and prosecuted by the mobile court. Security agencies have been charged to be on the lookout for those refusing to observe social distancing or to wear face masks, all of which are compulsory by law. Such people will be prosecuted promptly by the mobile court. I should add the safety measures are also applicable in the food markets. This means that market leaders must provide wash hand buckets and sanitizers at the entry and exit points of the market. All their customers and the traders must wear face masks. Offenders in any food market will be arrested and prosecuted. Let me reiterate that all schools remain closed. Wearing of face masks along with social distancing is legally compulsory. All big markets remain closed. All forms of night entertainment are banned. All borders remain closed, except for emo people who are genuinely coming back home. However, such people must clearly identify themselves and must subject themselves to necessary safety checks. Furthermore, only food markets and food vending supermarkets are allowed to open for now. Any market or store outside the food bracket seen open will be sealed up indefinitely. Needless to add that the dust to dawn coffee remains firmly in place. Burials, weddings, and the, any other type of public ceremony remain prohibited for now. I shall soon be meeting with religious leaders to intimate them on the inevitability of prohibition of religious worship. My beloved Indimo, these safety measures are in the best interest of all of us. We must observe them. Let us not wait until it becomes too late for us to realize that coronavirus is real. Let us do our bit so that we can complement government's determined effort to curb the spread of the disease in our state. Remember the wise saying that God helps those who help themselves. Let us be wise and help ourselves so that God can help us. Thank you all and may God bless all of us. Thank you.